Now, usually, I try to make videos that inspire you to travel or chase your dreams, and I'd much rather you watch those. But I do realize that a lot of times, chasing your dreams end up becoming a business. So I thought I'd lend a helping hand or two. Fixed asset turnover ratio. Get excited because two things are happening here. Number one, you see turnover and you realize that we're probably looking at one thing and we're trying to analyze how good we are taking that one thing and turning it into sales, money that we're collecting. And second reason to be excited is because you are starting to actually hone in on a very crucial aspect of business, which is our net fixed assets. And you probably won't start appreciating exactly how much work your net fixed assets are doing for you until you speak about managerial economics and we start talking about economies of scale. But for right now, just understand that your net fixed assets are your property, plant, and equipment, okay? If you and I own a shoe factory, right? We're going to have land where we place a plant and we're going to have some equipment to make those shoes depend like i shouldn't say depending regardless i should say that's a better word regardless regardless of how much we decide we're going to produce right if we decide that eh, it's going to be a slow month for us so let's only make 100 pairs of shoes even though we've been making a thousand pairs of shoes every month the size of our property land and equipment our property plant and equipment is not going to change, right? It's fixed. It is what it is. But you would think, hey, if I'm not making so many shoes, I don't want to have to exhaust a lot of my resources. Well, guess what? It's fixed. Regardless of what you try to produce, you're not going to be you're not going to be able to adjust the use of your fixed assets. Your property is going to be there. Your plants are going to be there, your equipment is going to be there, and you're probably just going to be, they're probably going to be generating the same exact cost regardless of your output. All right? So they are fixed. And we want to know how good are we at getting money, collecting money, as a result of using our fixed assets. And it's very simple. We're going to look at your income statement. We'll say, let's say in the period we're looking at, we made $100,000 because it's my favorite number to divide. Anything with zeros is awesome for me to divide divided by our net fixed assets, which we'd find, I should say, on our balance sheet. So income statement balance sheet, even though they are in separate statements, it doesn't mean that they don't have a relationship, okay? Um, let's say, um, I'll say $20,000. It's not realistic, but again, it's very easy for us to divide and conceptualize. All right, so we'll say that our fixed asset turnover ratio in this case is it's very simple, it's just five. But we'll say five to one because we want to actually have a conversation and see what's going on. So for every dollar value of our fixed assets, we're collecting five dollars. And I'd say that's pretty good. Right? If if anything it would make me want to expand and have more fixed assets, have more a bigger factory, I should say. So we can produce more and collect more money. Let's say we do expand, right? And we take it from, all right, we'll say our Netflix assets, they go to 50,000, all right? We got really, really, really excited and we thought, hey, you know what? If we put a little bit more money in here, we're able to collect a whole lot more from the public. Let's say for some reason we make now 200,000. And we collect 200,000 in sales, I should say. Okay, so simple math again. I'm gonna size this four to one. All of a sudden, now it's four to one. Our fixed assets turnover ratio is four to one. We put 30 more thousand dollars, we more than doubled the value of our fixed assets, but we didn't more than double our sales and this is going to happen in business you want to be able to track these things so you're not just dumping money and just thinking ah you know what the more money I dump into the company the more I'm going to get out of it that's not necessarily true and again you're going to appreciate this a whole lot more when we start talking about economies of scale and talk about uh, managerial economics but for right now understand that your property plant and equipment if you decide you're going to underproduce 
there it's not going to be forgiven usually you would still soak up a lot of costs for you to maintain them for you to run them so you want to get as much as you possibly can out of them so if there's a way for you if you're really looking to invest in your uh, fixed assets you want to be smart about it obviously a four to, a four to one ratio here is not bad you know if if this if the first example here a five to one results only in a profit of what let's say fifty thousand after all our expenses are paid our SGA expenses are paid and two hundred making two hundred thousand dollars or four to one results in us keeping a profit of let's say eighty thousand dollars or even a hundred thousand dollars because obviously we're able to utilize our expertise a whole lot more and if you know we're advertising we're getting more bang for our buck in just the same amount of advertising having a lot more products to offer and a lot more people we're able to satisfy it's four to one is not necessarily a bad thing okay so it's not something that's straightforward as just looking at two ratios and saying hey this is higher and this is lower so let's only leave it at the uh, the twenty thousand dollar property plant and equipment investment there's a lot of thinking that goes into it but at least you understand what's going on you know how much you're getting from your fixed assets which are incredibly important to uh especially manufacturing companies companies that make things Okay. All right. So we're actually, hopefully you feel how easy this is. You just, you're starting to see that the ratios tell you exactly what they want you to know. The formulas, it's almost unfair at this point. Like looking at a formula, you know exactly what's going on. Don't complicate it. Don't think just because it's in a very expensive textbook that it needs to be difficult. It is not. Get excited. You know business. You, you figured it out. All right, that's enough for right now. Well, all right, I say enough for right now, but I'm just going to stop this video and make another one, like literally make another one right now. Thank you so much for watching. Turning a dream into a reality usually ends up becoming your business. That is why we have the Help Enhance videos. Subscribe, like, and feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Fans of Kindness, our Facebook page, is also waiting for you. See you in the next video. Until then, be your best and never stop learning.